Hey guys, what's up? Evan Schneider here. Yesterday, my wife and I just got back from a trip to Trinidad and Tobago. We spent like 10 days out there. Uh, my wife actually grew up out there. And while we were out there, I took a ton of video footage um, from this camera and my drone. I'm planning on putting it together into a little travel film and uh, I thought it would be cool to kind of just document the process um, to show you guys how I take the footage from the camera and bring it on the computer, how I organize it, and then also how I edit and color it, just kind of take you through my whole process for this. So i um, headed into the office right now and I'm going to copy the footage there. All right, let's go. So the first thing I usually do when I get back from a trip is organize the footage. Now, the footage kind of got a little less organized than I wish it did on this trip because the hard drive that I brought wasn't big enough so I had to start recording to different SD cards um, and then leaving the footage on there which I usually don't like to do. It kind of makes me nervous. Um, just because I love to have one backup while I'm traveling. Um, so for instance, I have a card in my camera that I record to and every night of the trip, I copy that footage to the hard drive um, and I don't delete it from the SD card unless I really have to. And if I do delete it from the SD card, then I make sure that I check that I did copy it to the hard drive before I delete it. Um, in this case, yeah, I ran out of footage on the SSD um, I really wish I brought another um, hard drive so that I could have kept copying off. I like to do that too because I like to review the footage and to check out uh, what I shot that day and just kind of review the footage. It's kind of a fun way for me to travel and experience the place that I'm at. And my arm is getting very tired right now so I'm going to get a tripod. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you guys how I organize everything. So in my bag, this is the Wandered Provoke 31 liter. Um, in the top here, I have, actually let me bring it to the light. This is where I keep my SD card holder. It's the Pelican SD card holder. So inside here, I have all of my SD cards. Um, and so this, the 128, is the one I was using for the video. Um, this one is really fast and 128 gigabytes holds a ton of footage so I'm able to keep the footage on there after I copy it to the external hard drive. So that's there and then this is a micro SD card. This is a SIM card that I used in Trinidad and then some adapters as well. And then I'm using the uh, SanDisk um, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll link it. This is the one terabyte version. So yeah, I had to start shooting with other SD cards um, that were a bit slower, but it still worked out. Now that I'm home, I'm going to start copying all of these to my working hard drives and then to my backup hard drives, which I will show you guys in a second. So yeah, um, once I get home, or once I get to my office after a trip, I offload the footage onto my external hard drives on which I will be editing the project. Um, but before that, today I need to organize all of the SD cards um, to make sure I have everything. The 128 gigabyte, this card I'm going to put right here. This was the main card that I was recording all the footage on with the X-T3. I have to grab the micro SD from the Mavic 2 Pro. So here is the Mavic 2 Pro. I also recorded some other footage on the Mavic 2 Pro with this SD card. I found it very nerve wracking to fly, to keep flying the drone every day. Um, without offloading the footage from this card because if the drone ever went down, I wouldn't know where it went. 
This is another SD card that I used in the X-T3. So I'm gonna put that down right here next to the 128. And I'm pretty sure I have some footage on that one. I have my working drives right over here and they're all named after a different satellite slash spaceship. So we have Endeavor, Discovery, Columbia, Enterprise, Atlantis. So I have these hard drives named like this because it's a lot easier for me to get a new hard drive and name it and not have to think of a name um, instead of naming it like G drive four terabyte, G drive eight terabyte. Um, I can just name them like this and that way it's always organized and it's kind of fun to get a new hard drive and choose a new name to put on it. Um, there's a website that has a bunch of different naming schemes. Um, so if you go to namingschemes.com, um, you can click on like the main page and they have literally any naming scheme you could think of. Yeah, so anytime you get a new hard drive, um, you can just go to namingschemes.com, look up another name that you wanna use um, for your hard drive, and then you can just write that right on there. Um, and that way, when you plug everything in, um, you have everything perfectly named. Um, I name all the projects in capital letters, all caps, with an underscore for the spaces um, this is just kind of something I do across the board to keep it all organized. I prefer it to look as uniform as possible so that I can quickly and easily find different projects in all of my hard drives. So for this, I'm going to create a new folder in this hard drive and I'm going to call it Trinidad Tobago 2019. So this is the folder that I'm going to use to organize all of the assets for this project. Now inside this folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it footage. And what I like to do is I like to create the folder structure before I put anything into it, um, just so that everything has a spot. Um, I find that if I don't do this right off the bat, I end up just copying files, everything gets really disorganized. So if you keep up with the organization, um, it really helps you increase your efficiency and do things a lot faster. So I'm gonna create a folder for footage and then I know inside the footage, I like to organize it by what camera I was shooting on. Um, if I was shooting a different project that made sense to organize it by days, um, right here, I would do days, so I would do like um, day 01, sorry, inside footage, day 01, and then day 02, oops, day 02, so on, just like that. Um, but since everything is kind of mixed together and I was only on one camera, it makes a little more sense for me to just do it by camera. So I'll make a new folder, I'm just gonna title it XT3, and then I'm gonna make another new folder, and I'm gonna call it Mavic, Mavic 2 Pro, but I like to just abbreviate it M2P. So now that I have both of my folders in here, I'm gonna create another folder inside the main Trinidad and Tobago folder. I'm just gonna call it Project. This is where I put all of the project files, like the Premiere project file, um, After Effects if I use it, any sort of stuff like that stays in this project folder. I'm going to make another new folder called Music. That's where I put all the music. Um, sometimes I make another folder called Sound Effects, SFX. Um, that's just in case I bring over, I have kind of like a stock sound effects library with like bird sounds or if I bring in waterfall sounds or ocean sounds, I can put them in this folder. And then I'll make another new folder called Exports. Um, this is where I put all of my different exports, renders, um, different things like that. I also have a really specific naming scheme for renders that I do out of Premiere. Um, when I go through the Premiere exporting workflow, I'll definitely share that with you guys um, when I do that. Um, and then finally, I'm going to make one more folder called Stills. 
a lot of times when I first bring in the footage into Premiere and go through it, I really like to apply a LUT across the entire footage and then just grab stills as I'm going through it. Um, I also do that same process when I do color grading. Um, when I grab stills in DaVinci Resolve, um, at the end of the project, I like to save them into this stills folder. Um, and that way, when I'm sharing on social media or I need a thumbnail for the video, um, I can just go right into the stills folder and grab them really easily. So inside here, I'm gonna make a new folder called dailies. This is where I put all of the preliminary stills just from going through the footage at first. Then I'm gonna make another new folder called final color. And that's where I'm gonna put the final colored finished frames for sharing on social media um, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, this is kind of my basic folder structure that I use. Um, when I import footage, I do this before I do anything else um, and it helps me stay really organized. Um, sometimes I add other folders just for whatever I'm doing, but some people put numbers before them, but I find that to be, um, I don't know, I don't really like to do that because if, if I have to add another folder and it's in between two numbers, then it can kind of get a little less organized. Um, and I don't like to make folders that I'm not actually using. Um, some people have like folder templates that they'll use for each new project, but I find that to be confusing because then you have a whole list of folders that you may not even use. Um, so I only make folders for um, stuff that will actually be in the folders. And they're just organized by alphabetical order in Finder. So now we have all of the footage copied and organized in one spot. And one other thing I did in the folders is, um, since I was taking photos and video on the same SD cards, um, in these folders there's a mix of photos and videos. And so what I'm gonna do next is, and I already did this for the Mavic 2 Pro footage, is I made a folder for photos and a folder for video. So that way I can just go through and I can select the ones that I want. So I'm gonna do that right now for X-T3. I'm gonna go like this. Kind. Copy all the JPEGs. Wow. Select all the JPEGs. Drag them to Photos. And then take all of these, put them in video. There we go. So now I have all of the videos organized into one folder, as well as all the photos in another folder. Um, the next thing I would do is um, just because these are all photos from our trip, I'm probably going to copy all of these photos to another hard drive that I have that just has all of our photos on them. Um, it's just like a photo hard drive. Um, and then I'll probably upload these to Google Drive um, for backup in the cloud. Um, and then as far as backup goes for my videos, um, I actually have a bunch of, um, let me get them. So I have a bunch of Western Digital eight terabyte drives that I use as backup. So on each of these hard drives, um, actually I have one plugged in right here. So backup five has Zarya. And so on here, I just keep a continued um, backup. I sync it from the Zarya hard drive to the backup Zarya hard drive. Um, so on here you can see everything is in there. And so after I copy a bunch of footage, I plug in the backup drive that corresponds to um, whichever hard drive I'm using. Um, and then I make sure, and I use a program called Beyond Compare. Um, it's a really good file syncing program that I'll link down below. And 
I use that to copy everything over and to make sure that it has a checksum and make sure that none of the files got corrupted in the copy. Um, so that way, once I copy everything to my working drive, I have a copy on there and a copy on my backup drives as well. So after I do all of that, um, I just go through one more time. I go to the footage and I just kind of make sure everything is there. Um, I'll, I'll usually like click around, go to the beginning, go to the end to make sure I have all the photos and video that I remember capturing. Um, so yeah, this is the first clip that I recorded when we went on the trip and then I scroll to the bottom and check. Yep, that was the last clip that I did. And then I just kind of click around um, in between to make sure I got everything. Um, I usually make sure to not format or delete anything on the SD cards until I import it into a project. Um, just to make sure that everything imports fine, everything plays fine. Um, just to make sure that I can actually scroll through all of the footage on a timeline and do a little more in-depth check that all of the footage is there and that it's working and that it all looks good. So yeah, now that I have all of the footage in this folder, everything's organized, everything is ready to go. When I go to import it into my Premiere project, um, I'll just put it into this folder and that way um, everything is self-contained in one folder. So if I ever have to move it to a different hard drive, um, all I have to do is copy this folder and I know that um, I won't have any offline files when I open it up again on a different computer or on a different hard drive. Um, if I ever download music or I download anything or add anything, I always make sure to copy it to this folder um, before I do anything else because then um, I can make sure that everything is organized. I know it seems like a lot of work and it can be a little tedious. Um, ideally, I probably would have done this process on the trip as we were going, um, but like I said, I ran out of hard drive space and it got kind of messy on this one. But yeah, if you're doing it as you go, I think you'll find that it's a lot easier um, you'll run into less snags or make less mistakes later on down the line and um, Yeah, so I hope this was helpful for you guys to see my process for this and um, Definitely stay tuned for future videos where I'm going to be kind of going through the process of editing and coloring Exporting all that good stuff with this video um, I just think it'd be fun to share the process. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one